and welcome everyone to our Women's in Manufacturing panel, Creating the Next Generation of Women Leaders. My name is Nancy Patton, and I work with Insult Marsh's communications team, and I'll be your guide today. Before we dive in and get inspired by our panelists, I have a few housekeeping items to cover. Um, if you have any questions, please share them with us using that questions feature in your control panel, and we'll be happy to follow up with you after. You'll receive a link to rewatch today's panel along with additional resources in your email, so be on the lookout for those. And finally, upon exiting our webinar today, you'll be prompted to complete a very short survey. Please give us your feedback, your thoughts, and other ideas of topics you'd like us to cover in the future. At this time, I'm going to invite Christine Torfenka, an audit manager in our Salt Marsh team and within our manufacturing team to introduce our speakers and get us started. Christine. Thank you, Nancy. We are so thrilled to introduce our women in manufacturing panelists today. We have Commissioner Catherine Starkey. She is a commissioner for Pasco County District, District Number Three. We have Paula DeLuca. She's a business advisor for Florida Makes. We have Melissa Broad. She's an associate dean of University of West Florida's College of Business. We have Angel Barton. She is a director of human resources for Aeromatrix. We have Jackie Von Hammond. She is a production control manager for Hein Automation. We have Barbara Biller. She is an owner of a manufacturing company called Intellitech Inc. Our panel will be moderated by Robin Liska, and she is a director of development for AmSkills. Now I would like to turn this over to Robin to get us started with our panel discussion. Thank you so much, Christine. I'm really excited to be with you all here today and really showcase what uh, women business leaders are doing in the world of manufacturing. Um, I know you all have a great extensive background and we have just prepared a few questions and I would love for you to feel free to elaborate um, on those uh, with any topics that you really feel would be uh, pertinent to speaking to other women about being in manufacturing and maybe what would spark their interest in getting involved. So I really want to start uh, today off with uh, Commissioner Catherine Starkey, who has um, not only been a great uh, leader, uh, business leader in Pasco County, but she has been really, really instrumental and impactful in um, impacting manufacturing uh, in general. Uh, across not just Pasco County, but her reach has extended into other counties as well. So, um, Commissioner Starkey, can you just tell us what piqued your interest in increasing the footprint in of manufacturing in your district and, and really beyond that? Sure, I'd be happy to. You know, I didn't really realize it when I got started in all this, but my mother, my grandmother, and my aunt were all major clothing manufacturers in Miami back when we still made clothes in our country and before we shipped all those jobs overseas. Um, but really my, my path um, towards where I am today started when I was a school board member in Pasco County and learned about career academies and how, um, you know, we, kind of, we stopped really uh, showing our kids what, what um, their future jobs could look like and thinking everyone was going to college. And, um, Long, long story short, I started the Engineering Career Academy at, at River Ridge High School and really um, got to know a lot of the manufacturers. And, and then I started hearing their stories about how they, they just couldn't find anybody. Uh, so I also um, was dismayed to see so many of our jobs go overseas and wanted to bring manufacturing back to the United States. And um, so, so I really dove into the manufacturing world and um, started a training program, which Robin now work, who Robin works for, called Am Skills. Uh, but I look at it as a, a three-pronged approach for my county, my state, and my country. Um, we're helping students get a great career. Um, we are helping local companies expand and be able to um, to expand their business. And I also um, I'm interested in bringing other manufacturers from other countries here as an economic development driver. So uh, there's just, you know, many everything you touch is manufactured. And I think COVID showed us how dangerous dangerous it is 
once we depend on other countries for the things we need here. So it's just been a really uh, interesting journey for me. And I'm, I am uh, very excited to, to uh, be able to help my community, my, my state and my country in, in the manufacturing world. That's awesome, Catherine. And could you just touch a little bit on some of the women, uh, females that AmSkills has been able to help? Since you mentioned AmSkills, I'm going to shamelessly go that go down that road um, and uh, and talk to us a little bit about uh, maybe some of those stories. Sure. Um, some of the most memorable come to mind are actually women who were disadvantaged. Uh, we had a, a, a woman who um wasn't able to really hold a complicated job um she was in hernando county but we we found that she loved to weld so she was a and loved that repetitive nature of welding and so she's off with a career in hernando county now after training with us um doing welding at a manufacturer there and then we have our homeless moms uh in metropolitan ministries we we have one in particular nikki that um she was a domestic violence survivor, violence survivor in Hillsborough County. And after a year there with no training, they transferred her to Pasco County and they partnered her with AmSkills. And um, we have many companies that we work with. And one of them is True over in Odessa. And we married her with True. And after her 90 day uh, trial period there, they hired her I think somewhere around fifty two, fifty four thousand dollars a year. She actually got a free car from the Hyundai Corporation, and she and her three kids moved out of the shelter uh, and into an apartment, and she's just risen the ladder quickly over there at True, and they love her. And I think in our last boot camp, we also we had two more mothers uh, from the homeless shelter that just went through this boot camp, and I can't wait to see who's going to hire them. But um, yeah, those are some of the, the women that we've been able to help um, Get, get great jobs. But it's also been very interesting for me to meet women who run manufacturing businesses. Mettler Toledo over there is being run by a woman. And um, frankly, there aren't enough women in manufacturing, but I think I think that that uh, that ceiling is being burst all the time. So yeah, I would have to agree with that for sure. And I'm sure all of you that are on the panel today um, will be able to speak to a little bit of that in your own uh, lines of work. But thank you, Commissioner Starkey, for being on with us today. And we're going to ask uh, maybe some overall questions at the end. So stay on. Uh, it's going to get more exciting. I'm going to move over to Paula DeLuca. Paula uh, is a business advisor at Florida Makes, and they are a Florida State Association. You can tell us maybe a little bit more about that. Um, Paula and what what your organization is is doing to help manufacturers, but more importantly, how did you get started in this industry? And well, thank um, you. yeah, thank you, Robin. It's it's really great to be here with all these lovely ladies and uh, excited to talk about the subject. Uh, I have to say, um, I think manufacturing is in my blood. Uh, my father was in manufacturing. He was a plant manager at many different companies. And, you know, I really didn't intend uh, on having a manufacturing career, uh, but when I was, uh, I think it was in my 20s and I got a job at a manufacturing company and I started in inventory control. Uh, I like numbers a lot. Uh, so I moved my way up into the company, um, into supervision uh, and then into management. Uh, my, my main career has been in materials management and it, you know it's really been uh, a great place to be um, for for women. It's you know I, I've worked uh, what we'll say mainly in a man's world and a man's job. Um, so it's it's been an interesting ride. Um, I started up in uh, Buffalo, New York, uh, and my uh, first experience getting into uh, leadership. I was a member of the Apex organization, the American Production Inventory Control Society. And I got on the board of directors and I worked my way up to being the first woman president of the Buffalo chapter there. So that was uh, pretty exciting. And, uh, you know, I looked at it as a great accomplishment. To tell you uh, a little bit about Florida Makes, we are the manufacturing extension partner for the state of Florida. And we have had the contract to be the MEP for the state. Uh, we are in our sixth year now. 
And our whole mission and goal is to work with manufacturing companies and to help them grow uh, and learn about new technologies and help them with training, um, really to um, you know help them with the things that they don't have the resources to take care of. So we are very happy to be here uh, and to help all our manufacturing companies grow and learn new things. Awesome. So because you kind of didn't plan to be in manufacturing, um, <laughs> were there any initiatives that you've supported or have supported to attract women, other women into the manufacturing industry through Florida Makes or otherwise? Well, uh, I, as I said, I started in Buffalo, New York, and I've, I've lived in a couple of different states. This is the second time I've been in Florida. In fact, um, Commissioner Starkey mentioned uh, River Ridge High School. Uh, I was a single mother, and both my sons graduated from River Ridge, so I was uh, in Pasco County. <laughs> um, I also lived in North Carolina. So um, working at a number of different manufacturing companies, I've, I've been involved with Apex for many, many years. Um, and just, you know, leading the teams of people that I've had in the materials group, uh, you know, attracting a number of women to come into that position uh, and, you know, mentoring them and working with them. Um, you know, it's, it's really been fun um, to help them uh, grow along the way. I had uh, some mentors in my career. And I will say uh, one of my uh, female mentors, um, she really encouraged me to continue my education. And after my boys graduated high school is when I actually went back to school and finished my bachelor's and master's degree. Um, you know, so it just, I think it's just, you know, women need to understand that, you know, it's a lifelong learning opportunity. Um, you never stop learning. And, you know, just by working with the teams that I've had and being involved with different events, um, we have a lot of a lot of different events that manufacturers come to, meeting with many different manufacturing companies. You know, there's opportunities to talk to people that work on the manufacturing floor. You know, we do uh, enterprise company assessments uh, to help companies understand where they can make some improvements. And that gives me the opportunity to get out on production floors and talk to the people that work there. Um, it's it's just a, a good opportunity for, uh, you know, to have the arena, uh, to have those conversations. And of course, uh, being a part of uh, the Bay Area Manufacturers Association, you know, um, they have a, a woman executive director. So we go out and uh, meet um, companies together. So, you know, there's always opportunities to have those conversations. And that's what I think is really important, just to be able to have the conversation uh, and tell people that, you know, it's a great place to be. Yeah, truly leading by example. Uh, and I've seen you do that uh, just in the last short period of time that I've known you and uh, and I'm very inspired by what you've been able to accomplish uh, in your field and, and in in the field of manufacturing for sure. Okay, well, let's move on to Melissa. Melissa Broad, I'm excited to meet you today and talk to you a little bit about um, what's going on in the world of traditional education uh, and how, uh, how maybe is your staff influencing women in their careers and classes to become interested, more interested in careers in manufacturing? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for first having me on the panel. It's great to be here with all these uh, amazing women leaders um, and the opportunity to, to, to talk about what we're doing in the College of Business. I mean, listen, our mission is to prepare our students for successful careers and lives. And, and for our women students, you know, steering them towards careers in manufacturing is a great way to meet our mission. I mean, statistics show that I think 8.7, almost 9% of the population in the U.S. Um, works in manufacturing. And the salaries are great for people that are managers in manufacturing. I think in the state of Florida, it's almost $75,000. I mean, boy, that's great to tell your graduates that they may enter their careers and get a, a, a management position at that rate. So tremendous opportunity for, for jobs in manufacturing. I think um, there might be a 2.1 million, uh, million unfulfilled jobs by 2030. And a lot of those jobs are 
high tech and management positions. And that's really great for our women. You know, the reality is women make up 47% of our total workforce, but only 30% of, of them are employed in manufacturing. So, so what a tremendous opportunity. And so things that we're doing to encourage our women students to become interested in careers in manufacturing is we're putting manufacturing concepts in our curriculum, uh, in our operations management, management science, management information systems, our supply chain management classes. And listen, a lot of those classes have women faculty, many of whom have industry experience. And so I guess having them as examples and uh, may sort of put a glint in the eye of some of our women students who may not have thought about manufacturing as a, as a career path. Uh, we also use live cases. You know, that's where we go out. We partner up with a real business that has a manufacturing problem. And uh, our students work as consultants in that class, and it really teaches them about what happens in the real world. And, and more importantly, it kind of bridges the gap between what we're teaching in the real world, teaching in our classrooms and what happens in the real world. And a lot of these cases involve on-site visits, and they can see women leaders in action. And so that's a fantastic way for us to expose our students to that. Uh, we have internships in manufacturing that we encourage our students to do. Again, getting that real world experience, that field experience to teach them about uh, what is happening out there. And again, maybe consider a career that they had not thought about uh, before. But more importantly, when our students do these live cases and they do these internships, for us, it makes them more workforce ready on day one. And that's one thing we want our folks that are hiring our students to know that we're working really, really hard to do that. One special program we have here is our executive mentor program. That's where we uh, pair our students up with uh, local leaders in our community. Many of them are women leaders from the manufacturing industry. And so what a great way for them to provide guidance and networking uh, for our students. And, uh, you know, kind of one final way is through career fairs. You know, we, we invite different industries to come out here on campus. That includes manufacturing firms who hopefully can take the opportunity to meet with our students in person and recruit them and, and really educate them about those opportunities. So when you think about all that, I mean, really, again, it, you know, directing our students, our women's students towards careers in manufacturing is really a great way for us to fulfill our mission here in the College of Business. That's awesome. And I'm just curious, since we have a little bit more time, uh, in how many of these students uh, started out maybe in in manufacturing uh career field desires or are they coming into it from other fields um just just a, a question really that's really great no i don't know the exact number but i do know of course we do have students who have come from from manufacturing who are just looking to get the extra education so they can move up and again we also try to integrate those manufacturing concepts into our curriculum so that so that our women students are aware of that, what the uh, opportunities are for them, uh, great uh, career pay, great career paths for them. And so there's just a lot of opportunity there and we're happy to encourage them in that direction. I love the fact that you have a mentorship program and I just think that's so important. It's something that we do as well uh, in non-traditional education. Um, we have a mentor that stays with the candidates and then moves into uh, working with the employer after they're hired and really making sure that they transition. And I'm telling you, it's it's truly one of the most uh, impactful pieces to the to the program is to make sure that those mentors are there for them and helping them every step of the way until they start to feel comfortable in their roles and their jobs and and it will, I think, definitely lead to the longevity of someone ha just having a job versus a career. And that's really the mission out there, right? To make sure that these people are entering into career fields and they're going to stay there as viable uh, employees. And I'm sure that some of you business owners and leaders in manufacturing would agree with me, right? Uh, so let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more about that. Um, I'm going to move over to Angel, Angel Barton, and Hi. she's the Director of Human Resources for Aerometrix. So we're excited to hear a little bit about that HR role and, and you know, how, how it's maybe impacted uh, really anyone, but especially females coming into the industry. So um, how can we attract more women uh, workers in manufacturing coming from that HR perspective? 
Yeah, that's a wonderful question. And I've been thinking about it a lot um, throughout my career. I've been in manufacturing now for 23 years from an HR perspective. And I still feel like there's this misconception that when we talk about manufacturing, it's a dirty environment or it's a only manufacturing like machining environment. But quite frankly, technology plays a great part into uh, manufacturing. And we've really elevated from clean room environments to machinery environments. And there's a lot of um, process improvement, a lot of forethought that goes into manufacturing now, not just from like the engineering perspective, but really from the planning, the administration of it, uh, making sure that we have all of the, um, the dialogue going between customers and the different groups. And so there's a lot of areas where women can really be involved in manufacturing, not in the traditional sense of actually working on the machines unless they want to do that, but really from the planning and administration and really the, the, the negotiation of how we do shipping and receiving and all of these different areas that I see primarily in aerospace um, that can still be a misconception that you know manufacturing is only nitty gritty, oily type of work where it's really not that way for the majority of manufacturing companies now. And for us, we invite women to come in with no skills at all and we'll train them on what to do and then provide them the opportunity to either grow their careers with us or take different avenues in career, whether it's administrative or even actually production planning out on the floor. Um, I'm gonna be a little bit biased, but we know that women are very great at multitasking and they're very great at organizing and getting um, the ball rolling and taking on projects. And so it's great to encourage that in a manufacturing environment. We need more skills like that. Um, and so we're able to have our women in our field start out in the production floor with planning, administration, get into building parts as well. We have a lot of students coming from, for us specifically, the National Aviation Academy, and I enjoy seeing women wanting to build with their hands and wanting to be involved in the manufacturing of really important items that we build for not only commercial but defense work. And then if they don't have an education, we're able to grow that education for them, whether it's lean manufacturing concepts or Six Sigma concepts, which is huge in the workforce now, and then actually helping them to get their degree in case they want to get into management. I think what we find is that women are concerned that there won't be an environment for them where they can split family life and work life, or they feel like if they don't have a manufacturing skill set, nobody will give them the opportunity to get involved. And it's really not the case anymore. We're looking for a great personality, a great drive. We can train you on the skills. We can't train you on how to be a great person or a great worker. Um, and so that's really something that I've really focused on when I'm going to job fairs or when I'm talking to schools or high school students about being able to get into manufacturing. There's so many different avenues than just working on the machine. Yeah, that is great. And you touched on several uh, really, I think, hot topics that would pertain to women in, you know, considering getting into a manufacturing uh, uh, role and career field. One of the, the second question that I was going to bring up was, yeah. how do we how do we better provide work life balance uh, with career and family responsibilities? You know, there are single moms, there are, you know, really women coming right out of college sometimes and trying to decide, okay, is it time for me to start a family? Maybe, maybe not, or maybe I'm single and I just have a lot of priorities, but, uh, you know, can you elaborate a little bit more on maybe how we could better uh, support that? Yeah, I'd love to. So there's two, uh, two prong approach, right? There's girls getting out of high school who may not want to go to college. And so we actually have employees here who are quite successful without a college degree or going back to school for their degree. And because we offer the training, you don't necessarily have to have a degree, which gives you work experience to then understand what it is that you want to study. So maybe you start working here on the machines or working in our clean room environment, and you realize, I really love the engineering aspect of that. Or maybe I love the business aspect, and then we allow them. Work-life balance is extremely important. So if you're a student coming out, or you're a mom coming out, or a family member coming out, we obviously know work-life balance is hard for anyone in any industry. But for us, because manufacturing is a 24 hour a day, seven days a week opportunity, we have different shift levels. So I have a large female workforce that comes in on our second shift. So they're able to take their families or their children to school in the morning. And then they switch with their spouse or their partner to come in and they work from the 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. shift, 
which then means that they're not paying for childcare because they're splitting the shift. We're also a Monday through Friday facility. So a lot of manufacturing facilities understand the work-life balance and they work Monday through Friday, which is something, again, that a lot of people don't aren't aware of. They think that they have to get the worst hours or they have to work through the weekends or maybe it's a third shift. And that's quite not the reality anymore. So we really do believe in work-life balance and we try to incorporate that as much as possible so they could work any shift, first, second, or third, Monday through Friday, very late on the week, like sometimes on the weekends. But if we have someone work on the weekends, we try to get them in from like 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. so they can leave and enjoy their weekend. Um, and so a lot of companies are now understanding that the workforce is demanding that and we're trying to accommodate that as well. And I think that's really, again, one of the areas where we need to advertise that more. You can have a work-life balance in manufacturing and there's opportunities for families to really have a good family life on different shift levels to accommodate the financial and the social responsibilities that we have to families. Yeah, I, I think that's so important. And, and again, it really just opens up the marketability of uh, mm -hmm. your business and, and your uh, company um, when you can put some of those things in place. And I'm sure that uh, Jackie's gonna have a little bit more information about that coming from her aspect as well. But thank you, Angel, That those were great uh topics and and you know we really appreciate everything that you're doing to support women from the hr perspective as well um so um jackie let's uh let's talk a little bit about currently as a production control manager is this how you got started in the industry or where did you start <laughs> so thank you for having me i'm so excited to be here with all you lovely ladies um, to answer your question, no, I didn't start in production control or in manufacturing at all. Um, I, uh, much like Paula, manufacturing happened to be in my blood. My dad is the head of engineering for a motor controls manufacturer locally in, in Florida. And uh, I followed kind of in his footsteps and went and got my mechanical engineering degree. And, you know, walking out of college, got my degree, I'm gung-ho, and I was going to be a controls engineer, right? I, that's what I was going to do. And, I quickly learned in the construction industry that controls aren't as fun as you, you would think. So uh, from there, I was like, well, let's do something fun. I enjoyed manufacturing processes in college. And I went to be a manufacturer's rep, I had over 40 different manufacturers that I represented. Um, and I realized at that point that I, more than the sales or anything else, or even the construction sites, I absolutely loved how things were made, the way they processed, how they did streamlining to make it more efficient, cheaper, um, to increase profits for the company, how they work their work-life balance with their shifts and everything else. Um, and after that, there was no there was no stopping me. I was going to stay in manufacturing, whether it come um, high water or not. So I was lucky enough to be given an opportunity at a fiber optic lighting firm that was also local here in St. Pete. And I went over there to be their director of operations, um, worked on getting 5S into theirs, UL labeling on some of their stuff. And then I got the opportunity to come to Hine where I've been for the past seven years. I actually started as a supervisor here and as the company grew, the roles grew and now I'm a, uh, the head of production control where I have two lovely ladies that help me um, keep the floor in check and uh, the office running as my boss puts it like a German train schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, I'm sure you can appreciate that you know knowing <laughs> what that German model of apprenticeship looks like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome Jackie and and so what type of training do you think is needed to get more women into the industry? So for my stance, I wouldn't call it training per se. Like Paula and Angel both said, um, women's natural skill sets are needed in manufacturing regardless. We do tend to be a little more detail oriented. We tend to be able to balance all the wants and needs from all the groups, achieve the end goal and not kind of step on anybody's toes or upset anybody. And all of that is extremely important. Um, without planning, you don't have manufacturing, right? Otherwise they're building things that aren't ready to be built. They're not building things that could be built. Um, with, with that in mind, it starts one with having some larger scale, higher management understand that women's skill set is needed and warranted in certain areas of manufacturing. If they do want to build, let them build. But if they're happy in admin, like 
uh, Angel said, then let them go to admin, let them go to production control or purchasing. After that, what it really needs and what I believe in is at that young age, that elementary school age, we do more things with the girls, right? More STEM classes. They're so hard to come by. My six-year-old son can't even get in one right now because the seats fill up so fast. More robotic classes. You get a bookshelf at home. How about you grab your little girl and put it together? When daddy has to go change the oil on the car, start there. And, embed in them that wonder and awe of how things go together. I'm sure Paula had the same thing, right? You just start loving how things work and you want to build this or take this apart. And that just brings you into this whole industry. Absolutely, it does. And uh, I just, I love all of the input that you're all having. Um, you're, you're actually answering some of the questions I had for the end, but that's okay. I think we'll, we'll be able to have some good conversation about them uh, at the end if we have a little bit more time as well. But thanks, Jackie, so much. And um, really exciting to hear how you, you know, got, like you said, came out of college and you thought you were going to do one thing and you've ended up you know, in, in a role that you, it sounds like you really love. So um, I think that's great. And now I think we want to talk with, uh, are we missing Barbara? Are you on the line, Barbara? Yes, Jim, I'm here. Awesome. Thank you so much for being with us really virtually today. I understand you're traveling and uh, we appreciate your time today. But again, uh, you know, as a business owner of a manufacturing uh, company in Teletech, we really want to hear a little bit from you about, you know, what led you to be interested in owning the business in manufacturing. Sure, and I apologize if my connection um, fades in or out. We'll, we'll do the best we can here. Um, so like, um, uh -oh. I guess the benefit of going almost near the end of the piano, you, you start to hear the themes and I think some of the themes are, you know, did I start out wanting to be in manufacturing or realizing I'd be in manufacturing? Um, when I graduated from high school, there were three tracks. You know, you were either going to college, you were going in the military, or you were going to work. And um, while my parents didn't have a college fund for me, and I didn't feel the military was exactly right, the right place for me, I went into work a manufacturing company, one of the big manufacturing companies in the Baltimore area. So really for me, it was about opportunity. And then like manufacturing is today, and making the most of those opportunities. So the company I went to work for, additional education. So while I was working, I continued my education. I think we've heard all along this afternoon, it is truly about lifelong learning. And just to emphasize for um, young women trying to look at leadership and or manufacturing, the more you know, the higher you go. So um, it all came for me about opportunities that were available in manufacturing, both on the soft side and the hard side. And what I mean by that is that we've talked about admin versus production. Um, so what I also see lately, my company in Teletech, our 100% uh, customer base is in the life science industry. And I was just at a uh, cell and gene therapy networking and uh, technical session in Boston. There are so many more women in the industry today than there have ever been. And I think in the life sciences industry, there's abundant opportunity for women and the gender issue is not as large. Um, and I think what we also see is when we talk about manufacturing, consider life sciences, because what we just witnessed with COVID and the need for vaccine, not only research and development, but production, this has opened up a whole new industry that's got a lot of opportunity for women. And, and it's not really gender specific, but to work not only in the lab. So learning these life science skills um, is very important. Um, we talked, to, and I'll, I'll keep emphasizing education because within manufacturing, I believe there's entry level positions for high school graduates. There's a lot of opportunity for community college graduates who go for that next yet higher level of learning. A lot of hands on lab jobs, jobs in quality engineering, validation, opportunities there. 
as well as the university graduates where that higher level of engineering degree is, is really needed. Um, but I guess talking about skills that I think and, and training that, that we should impress upon young women coming up is trying to instill that level of confidence in order to be able to take advantage of opportunities that they see available to them. And there are plenty of opportunities in manufacturing. Absolutely, I would agree. I have learned so much this past year uh, being in the world of manufacturing now and manufacturing education and, and training. And uh, it's just, it's very exciting to see that there are so many opportunities out there. And thank you so much, Barbara. Um, I just wanted to kind of wrap it up with talking a little bit about now that we're leading into, I think Barbara had a great segue there about talking about, you know, young women, you know, coming right out of college. Uh, Melissa talked a little bit about it, but how can we better mentor and create the next generation of women leaders? And I'd like to just open this up to everyone to, you know, chime in a little bit more about, you know, maybe some of your, what you've seen working maybe some of the visions that you might have as an employer. And certainly I know Commissioner Starkey, you've got visions of uh, the youth getting much more involved in, in manufacturing, so. Yeah, let me let me jump in there if you don't mind real quick. Two, two things come to mind. First of all, we had this little ancillary benefit when one of our employees, one of our trainers, Julio's wife, so, so we bought a laser printer and Julio's wife uh, worked in a bank, right, Robin? Yep. Um, but she was so engrossed with the laser printer, she started making things. And she quit. She has now quit her job at the bank and is running her own little company, which I am sure is going to grow, making specialized gifts for weddings and events. So uh, su super cool that we've spun off a, a female-owned manufacturing business um, already out of AmSkills. But one of the things we did... Um, when we were uh, working with East Lake Engineering, and at the time, one of the top 10 engineering high schools in the country, was um, a summer camp for Girls uh, Inc. You know, we, we were running summer camps to bring students, in, get kids interested in manufacturing, robotics, engineering. And one week of those, the camp session was devoted to Girls Inc. And they came in from all over the country. So Robin, I, I really think we should you know, continue that at AmpSkills when our new building opens up. Um, but, we, you know, I think we start young, um, opening the eyes of these young kids, uh, young girls, about what this means to be in manufacturing. Absolutely, I would agree. Anyone else? Robin, if I could jump in. We talked so, a little from me. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Uh, we, we talked no, a little no, bit about of our executive mentor program, but mentorship programs is a, is a wonderful opportunity to uh, help somebody decide on a career path and the steps they need to take to be successful. Actually, today I had somebody job shadowing me. What a neat opportunity. You know, somebody's interested in higher education. They don't know what it's like day to day, and they came in and spent a couple hours with me this morning. I thought that was a great experience to really give them a taste of what, what it's like in the office every day in this field. And I think they learned even in that couple of hours a lot of things about it. Uh, somebody said it earlier, I apologize, I don't remember who it was, but talking about, you know, flexible workplace practices and, and work-life balance um, for our women so they don't have to choose between being an effective parent and being an effective employee. And so uh, some of those things as well. So those are those are my couple of thoughts. No, those are great, great thoughts for sure. Paula, you look like you're, you've got something. To yeah, I was just gonna, thank you. I was just going to say, you know, um, having the passion that I do for manufacturing, I think it's really important that not only do we get to the students, but we also need to get to guidance counselors. We need to get to parents. A lot of parents still have that stigma that manufacturing is so dirty and it's awful. And um, I think it's really just, it's, it's an educational opportunity to let everybody know that, you know, manufacturing is a great place to be for everyone, uh, whether you're a young student, whether you're a parent. Um, and I think uh, getting into our schools and, and having our guidance counselors, being able to talk to kids about these opportunities and to understand that it's a really great career. 
Absolutely. I would 100% agree with that. I know, Catherine, we've had several conversations about, you know, how do we get that moving forward with the school systems and and certainly getting to the parents is is a great uh, a great way to to open up the minds and get that career discovery flowing. Right. Anything else on that topic? Because I do think we answered one of the other questions fairly well, which was how do we support the professional development of women? Um, and I think you all had some great, uh, really great ideas there and ways that you are accomplishing that. But if you want to elaborate a little bit more, we've got a, a little bit of time. I'll tell you something we're doing here in Pasco County. And I, I started this um, chapter or whatever this, I guess it's a chapter of, um, let's see, Commission on the Status of Women. There's a very, very good one in Hillsboro. I don't think there's one in Pinellas, but we're trying to get more relevant here in Pasco County. And one of the cool things we're doing is trying to, uh, to put together a list of women owned businesses in the county. And let me tell you, that's not easy to put together. And here's the other thing, and I'm glad we have an HR director uh, on, on here because I had my staff, I have two staff members working in the last week calling HR directors of manufacturers in Pasco County to try and see how many they had working on the workforce floor just to um, you know, see, see what our numbers look like. We could not get any information. So, you know, I think okay. it would be good if we could see what our numbers look like and, and, and then I know when I started really pushing and manufacturing, my husband was the president of the Pasco Economic Development Council at the time. And he said, why do you care so much about manufacturing? It's only 4% of our jobs here in Pasco County. And I said, well, there's the problem. One, it's only 4% of the jobs in Pasco County. So, and, and, and you don't realize how important these jobs are. They're great jobs. They're long lasting jobs. Manufacturers don't get up and move um, regularly. They pretty much are pretty stable and uh, we should be targeting more manufacturing. So uh, it's an interesting dialogue that we had. <laughs> no, and I'm really glad you brought up that commission for the status of women that has really, uh, you know, I think grown and impacted several things in Pasco County since you, you know, helped to launch that Catherine. So thank you so much. I have friends, personal friends that serve on that committee and, and <laughs> that's a great organization. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know we're getting close to our time, but I so appreciate all of the input that you all had and I'll give you just one last opportunity. If there's any, anything else you would like to add or in support of uh, manufacturing month and certainly uh, in support of women business leaders in manufacturing. Robin, and this is Melissa again. I know we were talking a little bit there briefly about supporting the professional development of women. And, and one thing I want to say is, you know, the research shows that women, women who want to move into leadership positions, particularly in manufacturing, have kind of four leadership challenges. One is credibility managing up and across the organization and negotiating adeptly and influencing others. And so when we talk about training and development, sort of customizing it for that sort of those issues is a, is a great way to help improve the, the odds on a, on a woman moving up in the manufacturing leadership field. That was so great. Just to, to add on what Melissa said, actually, that's kind of one of my experiences that I've had with a couple of my direct supervisors is, it does get frustrating sometimes to be a woman because we don't have the credibility or because we don't have, who knows. Um, my, my current boss has always been very upfront and very honest with me that it will be a struggle at times, but it, the only way to move forward is to go through that struggle. And I know that all of us are probably very transparent when it comes to the people that we're mentoring to let them know that, yeah, there's going to be the tough times, but as a group, we will work through it and we will better all of us in the long run. Yeah, certainly. And I know that with leaders like you all uh, in the positions that you're holding and, uh, you know, really forging the way for uh, young women who are coming up into an industry like this, uh, it's going to just get easier and easier for them uh, with all of that support. 
Yeah, and I just like to say, I th you know, I think there are many, many very smart, vibrant, innovative young ladies out there and older ladies like myself <laughs> that, you know, we have a lot to offer the industry. And, you know, like Jackie said, sometimes it is a struggle, but don't give up because, you know, just you can get through it. Um, I'm happy to talk with anyone about any anything that they have questions about. Uh, I, I'm sure most of the women on this panel are happy to speak with anyone. Um, it, it's really worth it. Um, it, it's, it, it, you just need to do it. <laughs> well said. I love that. That's been one of my favorite mottos for years and years. Just do it. Well, with that, I'm going to say again, thank you all for taking the time out of your very busy schedules today to uh, be a part of this, the hopefully first annual Women in Manufacturing uh, webinar uh, that was also uh, really created and, and hosted and sponsored today by Salt Marsh Cleveland and Gunn. Thank you so much, Christine. I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, ladies. We would like to thank all of you, our wonderful panelists, as well as Robin, for this very important discussion in creating the next generation of women leaders in the manufacturing industry. Thank you to all our viewers today for joining us. And now I would like to turn this over to Nancy Patton to close us out. Yes, thank you ladies so much for being here today. Um, I'm not really in the manufacturing industry, but just sitting here listening to you, it was really like nice to hear everything. It's kind of like happening in other industries too. So I think if all of us women, we band together, I think we could take over the world if we wanted. Um, but with that, thank you again. And um, as mentioned, the webinar was recorded today and everyone will receive a link to rewatch it in your email. So be on the lookout for that. Um, if you're around next week, we hope you can join us um, in Pensacola or Tampa for a happy hour to cap off manufacturing month. And um, it'll be a great time. So just let us know if you'd like to attend. You can email me or another member of our team. And after the webinar, please complete a short survey. We'd love to get all your feedback and listen to what you like to say or what you like to hear from us in the future. Again, thank you guys.